This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter. And I am Mike White, and you can find me at I am Mike White on Twitter. And this is ObsessiveViewer.com's The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Hello and welcome to uh, The Obsessive Viewer. We are a movie and TV podcast that covers a specific topic, be it genre, trope, movie, or show, each episode. You can find more of our work at ObsessiveViewer.com. You can also like us on Facebook and join the Facebook group at Facebook.com slash The Obsessive Viewer. And you can follow us on Letterboxd at Letterboxd.com slash Obsessive Viewer, Obsessive Tiny, and I am Mike White. And, uh, yeah, so real quick, uh, episode sponsor, Horror Movie Yearbook, great horror movie podcast that takes a few different, uh, titles from a specific year, reviews and, uh, critiques them, uh, against the, uh, backdrop of the cultural events and pop culture of the time of the year of release. <laughs> Find them on Twitter at HM Yearbook and on the internet at horrormovieyearbook.com. And then also, uh, yeah, last, uh, before, last part of this little rambling rundown, um, <laughs> Shocktober and Irvington tickets are on sale October 12th, 2018 at the Playground Production Studios in Irvington. Uh, tickets are on sale now. Go to Shocktober and Irvington.com to buy tickets. Um, it's going to be a great, uh, night this year. We have, a bunch of cool prizes we're giving away. A lot of Stephen King related prizes. Uh, Imagine that. I know, right? Like we're giving away some Funko Pops, uh, Pennywise and Jack Torrance and Norman Bates. Um, and also a couple paperbacks of Stephen King uh, nice. books. So yeah. So that's going to be fun. It's going to be October 12th at the playground. Go check it out at Shocktober in Irvington.com. All right. So Mike, how's it going, bud? It's good. You know, I was thinking this morning, because uh, I knew we were going to record soon, and I was hoping we were going to record today, mm-hmm. that uh, just listeners, I don't know if you know this, Matt is the obsessive viewer, but when I first met, before he met me, he was just the regular viewer. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. He was... <laughs> He hadn't fully evolved into his final form yet. That's true. That's you did push me. Uh, no, I, I mean I'm kidding. I don't. I, <laughs> I won't take credit. But oh. I think we were both just regular, mm-hmm. regular viewers. Yes, yes. Well, uh, and this is getting a bit ahead because I do have a couple of news items to go through. But you did push me toward um, actually tracking my movies and everything. That was kind of a thing that we kind of came to. Isn't that? Is that right? It was, yeah. yeah. Do do we want to do we want to get there already? I guess. Um. Well, let's let's put a pin on that for a second because I do have a couple things I want to go over. Okay. Um. Sure. 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 Yeah. Really, the only the only real big one that I have uh, for news and everything is kind of stupid, but um. Well, not stupid, but well, you'll see. So, uh, I actually saw this post, this uh, link to an article about Rotten Tomatoes. It was actually posted by our friends over at the Nerds You're Looking For podcast. Um, basically, okay. have you heard about this, Mike, that uh, Rotten Tomatoes is reevaluating the critics that it includes in the tomato, the tomatometer? Um, uh, the tomatometer? The, the tomatometer? Um, <laughs> and they're actually... No, I to, haven't. Yeah, they're actually going to incorporate uh, video reviews and podcasts. I know. Okay. Yeah. So which podcast? That's okay, the thing. Go, just go on. It is um basically it's only going to be the uh like two people in a basement who have no connection to the to the industry. I'm joking. <laughs> the uh kind of feeling. <laughs> uh the um, I'm in a basement. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well the um I guess the criteria, like I, I, I saw like the criteria for podcasts to be included in it is that basically it's going to be like a case by case basis. So it's not like if you meet this criteria, you're automatically in, but like they'll review your podcast okay. if you have been podcasting consistently for a minimum of two years. Um, you have, you, when they say consistently, like at least four episodes a month 
consistently. Um, and here's the kicker and here's why I'm bringing it up. Um, I think there were other, a couple other, uh, criteria that, that we do meet, but the last one is that, uh, you need to have, uh, on iTunes, you need to have a minimum of 200 ratings, not reviews okay. per se, but 200 ratings on iTunes. And, okay. <laughs> and so I looked on our iTunes, and uh we have we only have 41 which you know isn't bad you know 41 yeah, our average is like four and a half to five stars it's, it's hard to get people to like and listen to your it, stuff it really is and i and like, i like between the three of us we know more than 41 people right. and like i can't even get my mom <laughs> to 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 rate my podcast oh exactly and right <laughs> And so the reason I bring that up is that yes, we have 41 ratings, which is great. Like I'm, I'm to all 41 of you who have actually taken the time to rate us on iTunes and like the 20 or so who've actually taken the time to review us. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Like, thank you. Seriously. That is so nice of you. But (laughs) if the other hundred and, uh, oh, math. Oh my god. 150 59 59. The other 159 of you want to go ahead and click like a five star rating. That would be great because we know you're listening. We do. Yes. I do. We know how many people listen. <laughs> <laughs> we know how many people rate and the numbers don't oh, match up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I actually, I actually do know exactly how many people download the show each week. And like, you know, we can get to 200 ratings, guys. (laughs) Um, but all I'm saying is that for like, now that that is on my radar, once I see that we have 200 ratings, I will submit us to be included in Rotten Tomatoes. Don't know if it'll happen. Don't know if we would be considered worthy enough for that, but you know. Fuck it. Yeah, I, I, I just, I think that's interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I, I worry that opening it up to too much riffraff is, uh, I don't know, not to throw us or the right. industry or just whatever under the bus, but mm-hmm. I don't know. There's something a little, there's something sacred, I think, about uh, print reviews. You oh, know what I mean? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Like recently, I've been going on to rogerhubert.com and just reading reviews of movies I've watched. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There, there, that seems, um, it could be a slippery slope, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, there are people who think that Rotten Tomatoes in general is kind of a detriment to movie going anyway. Like, there are the, um, yeah. extremists who think that it's, you know, favoritism for, or it's, it's, uh, you know, claiming that people are paid off by, studios and everything for their Rotten Tomato score or whatever. But there are people yeah, who think well. that there there are people who think that that Rotten Tomatoes the idea of it just presenting an aggregate of reviews is just asking for people to just say like like oh. there's a level at which a movie yeah. is worth seeing for everybody. Exactly. Exactly. And it takes Yeah, and I get that argument ways. especially for the lay person. Yeah. Like you and I I don't know, we'll we'll see anything. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. We see we see movies we know are bad. Yep. We definitely go to that 22nd mile or we go to mile oh, 22 geez. to see bad movies. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh we're we're a couple of slender men. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um but yeah, so speaking of that, the second thing I wanted to bring up before we get into our letterbox popery. By the way, this is a letterbox popery episode. But the second thing I wanted to bring up is uh, when we last spoke with you on the podcast, you were um, in your last days as a movie pass member. In yeah, in the interim, you have you've canceled movie pass and joined AMC A list. So I was just going to yeah. ask, like, what's your experience been? How was the experience of canceling movie pass versus uh, how was your first or first two? Experiences? So what was that? July. I that was so. July 13th ish, I think was when mm-hmm. we recorded that episode. So it was about midway through summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I wanted to wait a little while to cancel movie pass. Actually, I, I, I didn't mm-hmm. do it right away because it uh, when we spoke, it wasn't really going through some of the stuff. It, it 
went through. Right. It was still we were we were still two weeks or so out from all that that craziness. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, so finally, they you know they changed their they they bumped it down to only what is it three movies three a movies. month, and they bumped the price up to fifteen. And mm-hmm. at that point, I was like, I kind of wanted out of this anyway. I'm I'm done. I'm getting out. Mm-hmm. Um. So we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully they don't take fifteen bucks out of my account right. on September seventh. I'll, 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 I'll let you know. <laughs> I was gonna ask you. I know. Yeah. Well, they said I I canceled on the app, and then the next morning got an email that said, "Congratulations on signing up for your new account." Or something. God. Something. I was like, no. Ugh. So we'll see. I have not been charged mm-hmm. since. That's um, good. But yeah, if if September seventh rolls around, I got it marked on my calendar. Right. Uh, oh, you know man. if that's there. Like just that's the entire news, yeah the entire downfall of Movie Pass has just been such a clusterfuck for weeks now. Yeah. And like yeah. yeah. It's funny because like this this is probably the first first week or so that I haven't heard anything negative about Movie Pass. And I think that it's it's That's hard to believe. Yeah. Oh, because oh, it's yeah. dead. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, cuz now they're at 3 yeah. movies a month that you can see 3 movies a month. It's still 9.99. They brought that back down to 9.99. Um Oh, did they? They did. But those, but not every movie. Exactly. A select group yep. of movies per day. Yep. They originally said you can only see uh, each week. They have a list of like six movies that you might be able to see. And then yeah. I think in the last week or so, they've upped that to like eight or nine movies, which I don't I mean, know. I can't believe it's still a thing. A yeah. Thing. That is oh, yeah. more than its last mm-hmm. gasp. That's more. It's it's beyond the last gas. Oh yeah, that's crazy. No, absolutely, nobody is going to continue to use that. Oh, absolutely. And I like, can't believe it. I can't believe that. Yeah, it's it's so insane. Just uh, like <laughs> you say, it like no one's going to use that, and I agree. But it's like no one. <laughs> I can't imagine anyone putting up with that with that level of just constantly changing their shit around, and. Yeah. To AMC's credit, I do, I do love the kind of uh, kind of shots fired announcement that they made. It wasn't even an announcement, but when MoviePass was going through their whole their their death rattle, um, AMC was like, "Oh, hey, just reiterating, guys. Uh, if you sign up, you're guaranteed to have the same price for 12 months." No matter what happens to our service and everything, <laughs> like we're not going to change your change your uh, price or anything. So that's awesome. Yeah, but I just I just kind of liked that like shot across the bow um, by AMC. But there yeah. was also someone tweeted at Regal Cinemas and said like something like, "Are you going to have a subscription service?" And then they're like. Um, uh, not yet. Like it was essentially like a kind of like a not yet, but take a look at this page later or something like that. So that kind okay. of started these rumors that, oh, is Regal going to have something going? So I hope that they do just because I hope that movie, like that means like movie pass did its job <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I will say there are no regals around me. So that, okay. that aside from what effect it might have on a list, it, right. it, Regal does not affect me at all. And see, and there's only like one or two regals near me. And like the one that is nearest to me is actually the closest one to, to where I live, the closest theater. But I, I don't want to go to that one. Yeah. Like I, I don't want to go to that one just because the sound isn't that great. The, the projection isn't as sharp and I just prefer AMC. But I mean, if, if Regal comes out with a competing thing, like that gives healthy competition to AMC. So then that can kind of keep that yeah. going. That's my concern with it. Um, once again, thank you for listening to the A list podcast right. presented by AMC A list. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of which, how has your experience with A list been <laughs> briefly? It's yeah. awesome. It's nice. so awesome. I, I, well, let me, let me not exaggerate too much. Okay. Um, Canceled movie pass, which was just a pain in the butt to sign up mm. for in the first place. You had to wait a month to get your card and the card, like who uses a card? I, right. It's like don't even understand. And so you sign up for AMC, and I was already a Stubbs member because mm. I had been going to AMC for since college. 
Yeah. You know, I go there. That's where I've seen a lot of movies. And so I signed in, like, thinking that I was going to have to just sign up independently to A-List. But I actually mm-hmm. signed into my stubs, and I just added on the A-List mm-hmm. aspect to my account. Okay? You sign in. Uh, what is it? 20 bucks, 1995. So I signed up. Uh, and then I downloaded the app and just right there that morning, we wanted to see a movie that morning. I signed up, I made my reservation. We went, I went ahead in the line. Mm -hmm. All they did was check my ID and scan my phone. And I went in and I got a large drink for the cost of a medium. Mm Mm-hmm. That I only paid 42 cents for because I also had a $5 reward. <laughs> nice. Nice. And that's like, that's such, that's so great. And like, I. The reservation gonna... is, it's game changing. Oh, absolutely. Reserving oh, yeah. your seat ahead of time is, is and, insane. And that's something that I've been, I've been doing for the last year and a half. Just whenever I go see movies with like Kirsten or whatever, like we'll reserve our tickets then. So like it's just I've been very familiar with the app and everything, but what I've been doing mm-hmm. since I am clearly like a power user of a list, uh, like as as often as I can, I will I will go and buy like a large soda at the concession just so that they can have six dollars and thirty cents of my money, right? Just yeah. to offset some of the tickets that I'm ta- some of the revenue that I'm taking away from them. Um, yep. Yeah, you could get yeah. two refills and they're still making money. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, I do have some stats, though, if you want to hear them. Um, yeah. Because today, I don't. as we... Well, you're going to hear them. <laughs> no. <laughs> today, today, as we're recording no. this, I actually got charged for my third month of A-List. So okay. that means that I have completed my second right. month of A-List. And... I just have some stats here. So month two, I watched 11 movies. And okay. uh, two of those were movies I would not have seen without A-List. Uh, the total... Why do you say that? Um, just movies like, uh, let's see. Like I saw, <laughs> I saw the movie Dog Days, uh, directed by Ken Marino. I never would have, never would have given it a second thought okay. or seen it. Like it's not that. Did good you go movie. by yourself? I did. Yeah. And uh, also, yeah. Okay. Unfriended Dark Web. I just, I didn't have really any interest in seeing it, so I saw it was coming out. Really? I, yep. Because I had never seen the original, so I watched the original, and I honestly wasn't okay. too crazy about the original. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah. you know what? Eh, might as well. I have a list. I might as well go see it. And spoiler sure. alert: I really dug. Dark web. <laughs> I thought it was yeah, actually dark really web good. Is awesome. Yeah. Um, but so the total the total ticket price of the tickets that I got essentially uh added up to a hundred and forty eight dollars and eighty nine cents worth of tickets. For... This is what you would have spent. Exactly. Uh so that yeah. gave me a total savings in just the month the second month of A list alone of a hundred and twenty eight dollars and ninety cents. That I saved. That's not including like the concessions or anything, but yeah. Uh huh. And then so now, as of as of now, two months into A list, I have saved a grand total of a hundred and ninety seven dollars and thirty five cents, and I've seen twenty movies. Mm-hmm. So now you say saved, and yes. and I agree that it's you did not spend that movie because of right, blah, blah, blah. right. Um, but I think we can kind of um. If you look at it another way, Mm -hmm. it's that amount of money that AMC is just giving (laughs) so that you can see more movies at their theater. Because Mm -hmm. you never saw 11 movies in a month or whatever it was. Yeah, that's true. Before, you never spent $130 worth of movies a month. That is that's true. The, that's uh, I didn't know you to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because even if I had like those big, the like I mean I've seen like that like I've seen a lot of movies in theaters during one month, but that's like special circumstances like film sure, festivals, not on and, average exactly yeah, exactly. So my point is, yes, technically mm-hmm. you are not spending that yes. money, thus you are saving it mm-hmm. because you're seeing those movies. Right. What it proves is that. 
the subscription program works because you're going to see movies more than you would, exactly. and they're waiving that amount of money. Exactly. And it's great because with like something That's I didn't awesome. really oh yeah. And something I didn't really consider is that like, you know, one of the big things with Movie Pass was like, well, we're doing they're doing movie theaters a favor because it's bringing in people to the theater and they're spending more on concessions and stuff. Which is true, but the thing with A-list that I find so appealing in terms of just a data um uh, in terms of just sheer data collecting is that they literally have like they they have access to the exact amount of money that they're losing with a list versus like what they're gaining in concessions and everything because it's all tied to the Stubbs membership <laughs> so yeah right i just I, I i like that in terms of just data mining and and they have that they can't like it's not like they're going to say like oh well you know we're it's doing good for concessions. It's like they can say it with confidence, like, okay, this is the amount that were increased that were that was increased for I want to know if they're making money yet. Do you think they're making money yet or are they still Honestly, waiting for that movie pass model to 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 go in effect? Honestly, I don't know. I I don't think that they're making money yet. They have said that they they uh in terms of users like like memberships they've actually it's exceeded uh what their expectations were so like i i don't remember the exact figures but i think they said that they anticipated having like 500,000 people on a list within a year but they're giving how many how many people signed up in these first couple of months they're on track to get to get to that amount a lot quicker than within a year um, oh wow! Okay, yeah. so they they are actually it is successful, at least out of the gate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Plus, and and I don't. Plus, it's not like they. I mean, it, it's hard. It's hard to say because the, technically, I don't know how. I don't know how it would math out in terms of ticket sales and everything. But like with Movie Pass. You like every single ticket that was sold on Movie Pass was like Movie Pass paying ten dollars or however much for that ticket. Right, exactly. Whereas AMC, they're losing what they give to the, which is a majority of the ticket yeah. price, but the, what they give to the studio. Right. So and yeah. like, uh, and I, I'm sure that there may be some kind of. Well, it makes you wonder if it yeah. all evens out. Um. Or it makes you wonder where it evens out. Yeah. Because you know with smaller movies, they don't yeah. have to give that True. much back to the studio. Yeah. Also, I and know. I wonder... Do Fathom events work? No. They, for is, Atlas, they don't. No. Oh, although I have... That set me up great for a, a good uh, segue here, but... Um, <laughs> uh Fathom events don't, don't work. Like, special engagements does, don't work. However... And this I was so excited about because this week, uh, starting this past Friday and going until this Thursday, um, they are screening 2001 A Space Odyssey in digital IMAX, which, um, I mean, it looks, it looks great, um, cause it is one of the most visually stunning movies of all time, but it's basically they're taking the 4K restoration that they've, that they've remastered for the, uh, for the 4k Blu-ray that's coming out and they're projecting it on IMAX screens, which mm, like 90% probably of IMAX projectors are 2k. So it's like they're, it, it, the, it's not as pristine quality picture, but the sound is amazing. But my point is like, for some reason, <laughs> um, those screenings were not excluded from a list. So I went and saw 2001, a space odyssey, one of my favorite movies of all time in IMAX, with a list twice this past weekend and it was just like glorious um yeah that's awesome yeah plus the marvel 10 year anniversary thing that they're doing for the cinematic universe movies mm -hmm. those are a list eligible also that's awesome yeah so like yeah. part of me is like i have all these on blu-ray but man to see Civil War on the big screen again in IMAX would be pretty cool. Very cool, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so yeah, so yeah, are, are we through, uh, jerking off A-list here? I, yeah, that's, <laughs> we can move on. Okay.
So yeah, so uh so yeah, go go sign up for A-list. I I recommend it and uh you know, tell AMC that you you did it because you listened to us, hopefully. Um but, So let's talk about yes. Letterboxd. Yes. Let me let me set it up if I can. Oh, absolutely. So when I came up to visit um let me go back even further. Okay. Take it Let's take it back to the let's take it back to the beginning, y'all. Let's take it back to the beginning, y'all. Here we go. Uh I joked at the top of this episode where I said uh that that Matt was was not the obsessive viewer yet. He was just right. the regular viewer. And then uh and then he got obsessive and, and you kind of mentioned how uh I helped you or or together we thought of the yeah. idea of what if we kept track of every movie we we ever watched, and really, this is kind of the genesis of the obsessive viewer. Oh, totally, oh, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And so it's like, what if we kept track of every movie that we watched, and and I think we just we kind of you know you went you went one way after freshman year, and I and I stayed in Evansville. And uh, I remember a couple years later, we were coming up on on our first what we would f- uh, call Shocktober mm-hmm. uh, in two thousand eight. And I said, "Hey Matt, I texted you. I said, "Hey Matt, I got an idea. What if we, what if we keep track of every single movie we watch through October, and then we compare?" And your response was actually, uh, "I've actually been doing that since <laughs> I left freshman year of college." Right. I was like, "Oh shoot, okay, so you did that for a a whole year without telling me that you'd been." Actually, I think I start. I actually my records go back to 2007, so that's when I officially started tracking my movies. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, that's not so bad. Yeah. You didn't. You didn't ditch me that bad. Right. <laughs> so at that point, we started keeping track, and I, I just like, like, what am I going to do with all these lists? Mm-hmm. What, what am I going to do with this list? That, by the way, in September, September eighth will be ten years that I've kept ten complete years worth of movies. That's so awesome. Um, and so Matt, in July, this July, when I came up to visit him on the last episode that I was on, if you're not using Letterboxd, you need to use Letterboxd now. Mm-hmm. He kind of showed me uh, what Letterboxd is, and I assume you've talked about it enough on this podcast that oh, yes. listeners know if we're talking about Letterboxd, they know what it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, yeah, I might. I might use it. <laughs> And I think I went home and I I messed with it a little bit, and then he showed me how to uh, like put in all my pat my my past movie watching into the diary, and we spent kind of the rest of the summer yeah uh, in putting all my movies. And oh I, yeah, and I got it done uh, just <laughs> just before I moved to the to the new house just mm-hmm. at the in the in the middle of August, and uh, I love it. I love Letterboxd. I'm so obsessed with it. It's I show yeah. everybody. Nice. Like my students. Awesome. My, I, I show my students. <laughs> this is my letterbox. Oh, you that's can see awesome. everything that I do. <laughs> Man, that's so awesome. And like, it's funny because I, I think when I told you about it when you were up here, I, I think that I was a little hesitant because I'm, I'm always very cautious about, like these days, I'm very cautious about like trying to get my friends into something. Because I don't want to come across as, oh my god, you got to check out Letterbox. It's amazing. You can do all these things and everything, and then you know, just the reverse. Yeah, but effect. that's how you are about everything. Exactly. So I'm making a concentrated effort not to do that. So I'm like, oh yeah, Letterbox is pretty cool. Let me show you. I'll I'll cast it to my TV and I'll show you how it's done and everything. And oh, while right. you wait for Tiny, you know, go ahead and take the laptop in there, play around with it and everything. And uh, and so I was so happy and so thrilled when when it took to you and like not that I had any doubt because like I know how obsessive you are with this stuff as as well and like I just knew that like once it got its hooks in you it was not going to like you were going to be in and I'm so I'm so happy um, and it's the stats it's the lists oh it's yeah the tags. Mm-hmm. The tags where I can put, you know, movie night on mm-hmm. on every movie we see on movie night. Oh, Jesus. It's oh, yeah. Good. And you also did your favorite movies list, which I, I checked. Because mm-hmm. you, did, you did a – did you do a top 25 and then just more? Or was it just like here's – Yeah, 66? I started with a top 25 and then, and then people were like, 
oh, what about this? What about mm-hmm. what? And I was like, oh, shoot, yeah. I need to, you know, I really only rank the top ten. The the top right. ten, I would say, this is my list, one through uh-huh. ten. And when you get past that, it's just the rest of the movies I love. Yeah. And, I, you know, I was like, I, why? Why did I stop at 25? Mm-hmm. I have... Somebody said Almost Famous is one of my favorite. I'm like, oh, shoot, man. Oh, yeah, I love almost, almost Famous. Huh. It needs to be, you know, kind of like I write about on that list. It's not, I'm not saying these are the best ever. Right. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying they're not even the ones I think are the best. What that list is, it's just a list of movies I want people to know that I mm. like. Would you say right? that it's, it's performance? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's a representation of the movies that maybe not necessarily mean the much to you, mean the most to you, but it's they resonate I with think you. Some of that nice, like they resonate yes, with yes. you and you. They're movies that you enjoy, um, and I say that because I've I've been working very digi- diligently yeah. at my top one hundred. Um, that my goal is to have that completed. By the time we do episode 300 of the podcast, and then episode 300 will be all about Matt Hurt's top 100 favorite movies. Um, to what end? Like, are you hoping to whittle 100 down or something? You know, at this point, I have a list of 100. Like, I have my short list, and then I have, like, 75 other ones that are kind of alternate. <laughs> um, or would be theoretically... Are you serious? You have 175? Yeah. Yep. Um, like I haven't been called at that point. Well, the, the 100, those are like the ones that are locked in. Like that's my top 100. What I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm watching them again. And then I'm kind of determining like, is it really top 100 worthy? Or is there something in this other column? And I have a smaller like list from that column. That's like five or six, like top 100 alternates. Now I want to talk so, about this, Yes, but you're going to talk about this in episode three episodes. Right. So what am I, what uh, am I to do? That's true. That's fair. So I won't talk about it much more. Just, I'm making very good progress on it. And it's fun because I'm sitting Can there. I ask you, yes. can I ask you what, if any movies you've cut so far? Yes. I cut Anchorman. Um, that's the okay. one that really sticks out as the one that I cut. Oh, that and like Tombstone, which I was so disappointed in because like it doesn't hold up that well. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of, mo- a lot of movies like that are place and time. Yep. Absolutely. Um, but there are some that like, how impressionable were you? you absolutely. Know? Like in, like with Tombstone, that's a great example. Cause it's like, it was like the first time I ever like saw like a Western even, or like I was even into like a Western oh, okay. movie. Yeah. So yeah. that's why it kind of resonated with me at that time. But it's funny because like other movies, like, like scream is on there because it resonated with me at that time so much and was so good. Like, so strong at uh cultivating my you know my life going forward in terms of movie wise well, you, yeah you've said yeah. it's one of the movies that made you love movies absolutely yeah. um so yeah so it, it's just it's a really fun little project and like all of the movies i'm watching them and i'm writing like little some are long some are short like reviews on letterbox and i'm putting that into the list. I haven't published the actual list, but if you go on, you can find my tags and everything and see the progress of it. But I've seen like, at this point I've seen like 27 oh, of them. You? Yes. <clears throat> so that is yeah. good to know. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm cl- You can hear the sound of my clicking. What yes. is it? Your top, is it, what's it called? It's uh. well, the list isn't public, but if you go to my diary, I'm looking and, at your tags. Okay. It's just top 100, top 100, yep. 27 movies. Yep. Yep. And okay, top one hundred. Anchorman didn't make it, so you took uh, you didn't give Anchorman that tag. Correct. Yeah. So when you make it through your supposed mm-hmm. top one hundred, yes, you'll have something like ninety, eighty nine, or whatever. Oh, uh, how do you mean? Well, I'll have. Oh no, 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 no! I have, I have placed other movies in in place of Anchorman and uh, Tombstone and stuff. So, like, it is. Well, how, so how does that work? 
Um, just like, uh, let's see. I don't remember exactly what I 100 did. movies? Or are you watching 175 movies? No, no, no. I'm watching 100 movies. Uh, the other... S- <laughs> okay, a peek behind the curtain. The extra 75, those are for a theoretical, like, top 200. <laughs> so those right. are all movies that are underneath the 100, like, line. Um, right, so yeah. but now so is Anchorman. Exactly. So... You're not – you did not tag Anchorman Top 100. Correct. <clears throat> so when you make it through this list, mm-hmm. when I look at this tag that says Top 100, there's not going to be 100 movies there. Once once I get through – okay. <laughs> I feel because like, you haven't watched the next 75 yet. Well, he, Correct? That's correct, but I think we're making a little bit more convoluted than it needs to be. Basically, on my spreadsheet, I have 100 movies on, on the left side. And then I have just 75 other movies on, on the right side that are underneath the n- number 100. So when I take okay. out Anchorman from the left list, from the left column, I do put in like another movie in place of Anchorman in that 100. Okay. Okay. Right. I understand that. Yes. I get, I get that. Yes. That's what you do. Yes. But if you're trying to watch – your supposed top 100 as yes. of whenever you started this project. Right. Number 101, mm-hmm. whatever was in the top 75, is not part of this project. So unless you also watch all 75, how do you know that 101 is better than Anchorman? I don't think you do unless you watch all 175. Uh, yeah, I don't see it that way. I just think of it as why does why does a movie that you're not watching as part of this project just get an automatic bid into the playoffs? Well, why does uh, it just get to go <laughs> without a watch? Well, the seventy five on the right side that's not tell, any tell me what number one hundred one is. Tell me what you replaced I Anchorman with. Don't remember. Hang on, I'll have to get my spreadsheet. <laughs> you don't even <laughs> remember. Well, because they're not in like that top one hundred. I think this is the distinction that I need to make. That top 100 or the, the list of 100 movies right now, they're not in order. It's not like number one is Back to the Future and then number... No, fair enough. Now. Fair right. enough. But they're still a group that is distinct from the other 75, right? Uh, like five These or six movies. movies. Made it. There is... Uh, okay, so... There is a group of like six movies that are like alternates for two, for number 100. Those are ones that, uh, if in the event that I get through my, my 100 movies that I want to go for the list, like basically the, the idea is that I watch the 100 movies. Um, and then once I've completely watched all of them, I organize them into my favorite, like the ranking. So in the event right, that I, but take, my point is this mm-hmm. once you've watched all 100, if I search your films and go by tags, top 100, there won't be 100 movies. There will be 100 movies. Because, because, not, because not including Anchorman, that just opened up a spot in the 100. So I replaced that with one of the other movies. That is better than Anchorman. That you're also going to watch. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> So Does you're watching it, more than a hundred movies. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so and there are some like on my spreadsheet. But I why have, not all one seventy five? Well, be, <laughs> because uh, and this is gonna this is gonna explode your brain a little bit. It's actually uh, the right side isn't seventy five. It's actually eighty five. <laughs> um, Whatever. Yeah, but it's just those are just movies that aren't quite one hundred, but their other favorites. So it's like in the event that like I, cause a lot of these top 100 movies are movies that frankly I haven't seen in a long time. Like, um, sure. like there are movies that I don't even have ratings for on letterboxd cause I haven't seen them in the last eight, nine years that I've been tracking my movies. So like movies like American history X, one of my favorite movies when I was a teenager I sure. don't know if it's going to hold up as a top 100 movie. Yeah, when you're so, when you're 17, that's a film. 
Exactly. And, yeah. and that's also why I, like, I think I mentioned this before. Yeah, I mentioned this on a previous episode, but that's the reason why Fight Club is nowhere in this list anywhere, because I've outgrown it. It's like, like the way that you described it was that it's, uh, my tweet. Yeah. What was it? Yeah. Um, you said it was bros the first day, thinking. The day, I, the day I removed Fight Club from my top 25 is the day I became a man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. That's a fine but yeah. movie, but. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 kind of like I said. It's not one of the movies I want as my performance of favorite movies. Right. Exactly. And a part like of I it. I don't need that machismo y- as part of my. Yes. Like in like visually, it's it's incredible. Like it's David Fincher. He's yeah, he's amazing. True. But like I just remember, and I cringe just a little bit because it's like. Oh wow, Brad Pitt just said sometimes the things that uh, things you own end up owning you. That's such a cool turn of phrase. And like when I was a teenager, it's like, oh, that's such a cool line. Not really really taking yeah. into account exactly what it means. Not that it's anything negative or anything. Like it it is it has its own like meaning and everything, but like it that meaning didn't register with me as a teenager who like the the yeah. amount uh, the amount that I was a consumer was how much money I saved up during the week from uh from like burning CDs for classmates so that I could go see a movie or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So let me just say so yeah. I just don't trust your project oh, your process. Okay. Listen. Mm-hmm. Until you've watched all 185. Well, I think you're kind of getting hung up on the the 85 thing because that what that's a list of movies that i made independent of the 100 so like it does no it's not independent because well, you're putting them in for movies that were in your hundred it's very dependent that's what i'm saying i see that all as... 85 of those are now dependent yeah on but like, what you determine from your 100 but like i know that like all the president's men is a great movie american graffiti is a great movie not top 100 worthy for me, for my personal taste and my personal experience. But it's in the 85? It would be top 200. So when I do eventually expand it to top 200, yeah, that's when I'll have to watch all of them and come up with another 15 movies. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, at this point, like I have a clear delineation of, you know, the 100 movies versus the 80, 85. Although I do. I do, I do need to, oh, I actually have that marked off, huh. Um, I do need to rewatch eighth grade because I have that on the short list for top 100 because I was so blown away by it. Yeah, me too. You almost, I almost as a rule, just a silly rule, a stupid mm-hmm. silly rule, like you almost want to wait for the movie to be a year old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I don't know why. That's that's, yeah. that's stupid. And but. like it's it's one of those things where I, I feel weird, but I feel confident, but also weird because I just I, like I haven't had like that emotional resonance in a movie in a long time. But also it's like, is that just the feeling of just it being so fresh? So yeah. I don't know. So let me ask this. Yes. When you're done, you're going to have a, a list called Top 100. Yep. Uh, it's going to be Obsessive Viewer, Top 100 Favorite Movies of All Time. And then the plan is to... well. The so thought, when, when will you watch a movie that you're replacing Anchorman with? Um, It depends. I mean, I may have already watched it because I actually... Like, I took it off of that column and added uh something else to it i don't remember but like i have the top 100 i have 100 movies listed so it's like it's not like it's not like i have replaced anchorman with a with a movie that is in that particular place like the the list of 100 movies those are alphabetized and i'm going through them once i finish watching all of them and I'm satisfied with, yes, these, this is the top 100. But I'm you're going to have go... to then make some choices, aren't you? In terms After of you've watched ranking? 100? You mean in terms of like ranking them? Or. In terms of figuring out where the line between 100 and 101 is. Not really. You're going to get to a point where you've tagged mm-hmm. 120. No, 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 no. I just. I. <laughs> No, not really. Well, okay. I think, I think we're getting away from exactly how I'm doing it. Like, 
let me show you my screen. So, like, on the left side, I have 100, and one, 100 movies. Right. And I will have seen 100 movies by the end of it. And if you see, like, next to next to each one, I have the date and the rating of it that I watched. I got it. you. I understand. So... Like those correlate with the rank with the tags on Letterboxd. I, so, I understand. Yeah. So like say I watch Apollo thirteen, I'm like, yeah, that's a great movie. I'm not gonna put it on my top one hundred. I'm gonna take it off of that column and then I'll find a, well, I'll have to find a movie that would be top one hundred worthy. Okay. okay. A, how do you do that? That is B, a good question. B, what happens when you get down to the 20 you know, you know are going to be top 20? They're also going to be top 20, right? Like you get to the ones you're just sure of. Um, what you need to watch the rest of the 85 because you might not have watched one of the 85s that might be better then a different 85 you subbed into your list. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Unless you watch all 185, I don't trust your top 100. Well, see, the 85 is more... Because I already know that they're like... Well, I mean, there may be a couple that I may need to rewatch, and I will rewatch them. And yes, if I do see that. But like, like, I just know that a majority of them are not going to make the top 100 like i can delineate in my mind like between top 100 and Mm -hmm. top 101 to 200 just in terms of the space in in there so like if i get through the the 100 and i'm satisfied with that but i've omitted five movies then yeah i can see i'd be in a little bit of trouble but i would see like i can reasonably rank the list of 85 into like you said like you said the when I get to the top 20 that I know are in my top 20, I feel like I'll know like which ones those would be in the top of the 101 to 200. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> I mean, I understand the process. Yeah. I'm just not sure that it's um, <clears throat> the list that you want. It's, I, I think it is. I would have, like for me, mm-hmm. by the way, this is great. This is I hilarious. Know. I love it so much. <laughs> It's so stupid. Who gives a shit? It really is. Who gives a fuck, man? But uh, good podcasting. I know. What I mm-hmm. I love this project, and I think yeah. what I want to do mm-hmm. is come up with what I believe are my top one hundred mm-hmm. on my thirty second birthday. In November or whatever. Okay. You know, I just have that list. Mm -hmm. And then I go through and I decide which of those belong there. And it's when I've whittled that down that I start looking at the next list to be able to put those in. Because I know that my, we'll call them my 85, right? Mm -hmm. Your 85. Right. I know that these are below these. Right. But I don't, I I don't know which of these are above which of these. Mm Mm-hmm. And which of these are necessarily above the bottom 10 that maybe don't belong? I just, I feel like I need to say I was wrong about this top 100 Mm -hmm. on my 32nd birthday. 90 of them are my favorites. I need to look at the next ones, the next group. And maybe not all 85, but 20 of them, 25 of them, to see which ones uh, go over and where. Because what if you watch one... Mm -hmm. That you think belongs in the top thirty, top twenty. And you're like, oh shit, that should have been there because mm-hmm. now in my thirties, that movie means something else to me. That's true. That's a fair point. At that point, I mean, I would just add it to the list and then omit whatever maybe number one hundred is and kind of go from there. Yeah, yeah. I <clears throat> let me tell you how to do your list. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds like such an asshole way to say it. But no. but it, if I if I were doing it like you were doing, mm-hmm. and you said of that eighty five, mm-hmm. you can tell which are going to make it. Yeah, I'm going to say cut that list in half of the eighty five. Cut them off and and put them somewhere else. Well, that's the thing. Okay, I do have a list of like a separate list that are 
specifically alternates for the top 100 that it's from that 85. How long is that list? Six. <laughs> There's six movies six? on there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, why the fuck did you say that in the I... first place? <laughs> uh, I don't know. This, it was, I was having a little too much fun. But, um, yeah. I but mean, no. that's all you had to say. Yeah. I, I think you need to watch all 106. Probably, probably, but like they're like that. I would, I would argue you'll find that it's more than six. Probably, well, I, I don't know, but there are just so many great ones, and one hundred mm-hmm. is a big number. Mm-hmm. I, I I feel like you're gonna want to end up watching a hundred and ten. I and I probably when it's all said and done, I will probably have seen like a hundred and ten, hundred and twenty, just by mm-hmm. process of elimination and second guessing because that's one of the best things one of the things i'm best at is second guessing every major decision that i make so i will probably have uh revisited but like there are movies like in that list of six movies there are movies that i like it's not necessarily that they are like one of my favorite movies but i feel like there's one or two that have the potential to be my favorite one of my favorite movies but I have only seen once or twice, and it's been a long time right. ago. So, like, a perfect example is the movie The One I Love, which I really enjoyed that movie when I saw it. And I feel like if I see it again, especially at this point in my life, I may get a little bit more out of it, having been more yeah. interested in, like, science fiction and stuff like that. Maybe it'll resonate with me more. So that's kind of a kind of a wild card alternate on that. So. I just – I wouldn't want you to – Get down to the last, whatever, Mm -hmm. three movies. You watch all three. You've subbed in, and your your top 100 is complete. You have Mm -hmm. 100 movies tagged, and you're all done. I wouldn't want you to get there, Mm -hmm. and then you you just don't watch the the three of the movies Mm -hmm. on the six, and you'll never know if those should be 97 through 100. My biggest fear is that I get through... The top 100, I, I lock my list, I publish it and everything. Then the next day, I happen to watch The Dark Tower, and then boom, it throws it into disarray. <laughs> well, <laughs> jokes aside, right? I, and see, you know, I, I think yeah. you need to watch. And I probably, in, I in my travels, I will likely watch many more from the 85 um, or from that six. However, like even when I do publish that list and I have when we have episode 300 and everything, it's a big celebration and really self-indulgent on my part. Um, <laughs> like it will essentially be, here's my top 100 list as of this date when I publish this list on Letterboxd, because if I see something that's like, oh shit, this is a lot better than this movie, I'm going to update it and keep it, you know. I'm going right. to make adjustments. It's not like I'm going to get the top 100 that I published tattooed on my back. <laughs> and then it's there. How forever. many of these are you watching a day? That is, uh, I don't know. Uh, usually it's maybe three. Um, but wow, that's also because I am fortunate enough to be, uh, to have a job where I can kind of have it playing in the background of my phone. Um, but those are only the movies that I know for sure are going to be on that list. Um, so yeah. So yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Spoiler alert. I did watch one of them in the theater in IMAX twice this past weekend. It was 2001. Yeah. So did you have plans to see it with tiny and then you just decided to see it once before you saw it with tiny? Pre- <laughs> pretty much. So that's how it's shaped out. Like, okay. So how did he feel about that? <laughs> Oh, you know Tiny. He was he was cool with it. Yeah, he probably didn't care. Yeah, I actually. Hey, this is gonna be awesome. We got a big thing. We're going to see Space Odyssey together. <laughs> Two thousand one. It's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. <laughs> by the by. Right. Well, I actually watched it two days ago. I have a standing order with myself, or a standing uh, agreement with myself, that any opportunity I have to see Two Thousand One: A Space Odyssey in a movie theater, I'll see. So when I saw that. And like okay. I, I like I wrestled with my scheduling for this week, thinking like I have one more A list ticket for this week. When can I squeeze in a third screening? And then I was like, I just can't make it work with my schedule. And like the only screening I'd be able to go to is at like eight PM and like 
I wouldn't get home until like 1130 and I have to work the next day. So, so I was like, eh, two's enough. But the thing is when me and Tiny go to see it in one week from this coming Sunday, it'll be different because that is actually going to be screening in 70 millimeter, um, in a 70 millimeter, uh, the unrestored edition, which was supervised by Christopher Nolan in that he, he and, uh, his cinematographer from Dunkirk, uh, Hoyt Van Hoyten or whatever. Um, they basically supervised this, not remaster of it, but they basically were at Warner brothers. Warner brothers was like, Hey, we have a 70 millimeter print of 2001. And so Christopher Nolan's like, I'm going to, take this and I'm going to restore it to how it was back in 1968 and like exactly Mm. how it was. So like when I saw, when I saw 2001 this past weekend, it was the 4k restoration through a 2k projector, um, digital. But when me and tiny go see it on the ninth, it's going to be 70 millimeter, like actual film and it's going to be at the State Museum IMAX Theater. It is going like it's literally going to be one of only five theaters in the entire country that is going to be able to screen this particular type of screening of 2000. Why is this happening? Is it some anniversary? Yep, 50th anniversary. 50th anniversary. Yep. Wow. And fun postscript to that, uh when I went and saw it on Sunday, uh Fekus was there. Like just randomly. Like I was actually I was actually sitting in my seat, in my reserved seat, and I was like messing around on my phone. I was actually browsing Letterboxd, and uh, I got a snap from Fekus, and I was like, oh, that's weird. So I, I opened the snap, and it's just me, a picture of me from like three rows ahead of me. And I looked up, and like he's just sitting there. So I went down there, and actually, I actually did not sit in my assigned seat, and I actually watched 2001 with Fekus. So, yeah. Friday Night Lights is one of your favorite films. <laughs> That's 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 what you got from the cool. Um yeah, yeah. Uh yep. So And Twelve Monkeys, huh? That one held up. It did. It did. It held up very well. Yeah. <clears throat> By the way, listeners, until we get these uh these pod chat videos on the YouTube, you're just gonna have to know that I'm looking at Matt's letterbox top mm. one hundred. I won't read it because Right. I'm gonna save that for a later episode, but yes. Uh, those are two interesting choices, yeah. I think. And who knows? They may, maybe they won't make the cut when I see, uh, the rest of the movies. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> are those, uh, are those on the bubble? Um, 12 Monkeys, maybe. Friday Night Lights, maybe, maybe not. I, cause I actually, when I watched it, like you can actually read my review on Letterboxd. Uh, I was actually really taken with it. Like rewatching it, just the freaking music is amazing. Explosions in the sky is like incredible in that. Um, also just, yeah. it really just kind of resonated with me in a weird way. So, yep. Yeah. Being the former football star that I, that I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So should we do a letterbox um, potpourri? <laughs> We can. We've got ourselves a, an hour episode here. Oh yeah, we you have. Just want to do a regular oh, old potpourri, and we'll call this a letterbox break in the ice. Sure, absolutely. Because yeah. I do. Well, I do have a couple of movies on your diary that I want to ask you about. So, do you just want to do like a couple of movies? A yeah. Do, well, yeah. Okay. Uh, so here we go. The yes. beginning of our episode. <laughs> right. This is an obsessive viewer podcast. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do you want? You know what's to... funny? I'm sorry. No. Oh no! You can, you can cut this out if you want. But I thought, like, how would I go through and do my top 100? <laughs> okay. Sure. Right. Like, what's my process? Mm-hmm. And the first thing I thought was, well, why don't I look at the films I've rated five stars? Mm-hmm. And I've got 27 five star. 27 five star reviews. Interesting. That's all the stars. Mm-hmm. Do you do you feel like a couple of them I'd give more stars to, <laughs> <laughs> and then fifty one four and a half stars. Interesting. You know that's how I got my original like crop of movies. Is I just went through my movies on Letterbox and basically my my rule for having 
having it be considered for the top 100 is it can't be rated below three or before four star b- below four stars. That's the cutoff. Oh, for so sure. yeah. Um, Oh, uh, see, I've got 173 four star reviews. Oh, that and that gets really challenging because yeah. there's some of these. Are, now, on like, Letterboxd, do you having been a fan of Roger Ebert for for mm-hmm. a lengthy amount of time? Would you rather that they had a life. four star rating rather than five stars? Um, no, I like five stars. Interesting. I think. Why? Because two is like a half. Um, just because isn't wasn't Ebert's scale always four stars? Yeah, it was, but I don't know. No, that doesn't bug me so much. Okay. Any any chance to give more delineation between, I think, is great. I will say I've said to you, and but I want to say it on the air here, mm-hmm. is that a thumbs down button would be really nice. Yeah. Because there are films, if I go to no ratings, uh, I have given apparently 57 films no with no rating. Huh. Um, and that's because I just can't remember that movie well enough to give it a rating. Yeah. To yep. give it a rating, because I just can't remember. Mm-hmm. But if I go to the half stars, these are all the worst. These are movies, generally speaking, I would give a thumbs down to. Yeah. Ugh. Slenderman uh, is a hard thumbs down. Right. So you know, now that we've talked about it, maybe once I finish the uh when I actually do the top one hundred, like I've finished watching all one hundred, maybe I will have like a list from that eighty five that I feel like will be like contenders that I'll watch. So yeah. not the full eighty five, but like those six plus like another like five. And then I'll rewatch those to consider if they should be, if they should dethrone something in the top 100. So I like it. Yeah. You know what makes me really sad is I'll I'll never get to watch all 100 of my top 100. Oh yeah. At least not uh, yeah. until my boys are Ugh. much older. Right, right. Oh, that'd be a fun little project to have with them when they're older. Like, oh hey. Oh man, to do with them would be awesome. Oh yeah. You say it if I. I wait till till high school age or so. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, when they're realize. and just think when they're in high school, you can introduce them to Fight Club, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, go okay. ahead, go ahead and ask me a letterbox potpourri question. All right, so the way that we do letterbox potpourri is that we basically load up uh, one of our or each other's uh, letterbox uh, diaries, and we basically mm-hmm. take turns asking what uh, the other's opinion is on a movie that they have. Rated and posted on Letterboxd. So, Mike, um, let's see. Uh, I am going to go ahead and ask you this because I know that you are very passionate about it. Uh, the Slenderman. Um, <laughs> David Slenderman. David Slenderman. Now, yeah. Slenderman, I haven't read any of the comics. I don't know how this fits into the Marvel Cinematic Universe or anything. But how did you feel about Slenderman or Slenderman? Um, pardon my French. And, <laughs> and I don't know if my students listen to this or who listens to this, but um, I fucking hated Slenderman. <laughs> it made me so mad. I was so upset by it. And, and by the way, you can read my review uh, on Letterboxd. It is my longest review <laughs> on Letterboxd. But uh, I just felt so passionately about it watching it you know i knew the reviews going in i mm-hmm. i knew it, it's it's like eight percent on rotten tomatoes Jeez. it's really abysmal right i mean it, 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 everybody knows this thing's bad development hell mm-hmm. some people were like uh is it a little gauche to make a slender man movie after that after the tragedy yeah. of the girls with particular friends it's it's just kind of been a problem all along and i knew that it was bad however we know that I love horror, mm-hmm. and I think that the IP of Slender Man is interesting. And see, that's what makes your review and the uh, visceral reaction you had to this so interesting to me. Because as far as like horror okay. is concerned, like you are a student of the horror genre, and you are far Thank more you. forgiving than anyone else when it comes to horror movies, because you see. Sure. 
so much, and you can you can find the good in each. You, horror you movie. think you've seen bad horror movies? <laughs> I've seen the bad bad right. horror movies. Is is what Matt's trying to say? It, exactly, and I mean yeah. that in the nicest possible way. Sure, sure. Um, so to see you just rip a horror movie to shreds makes like to me makes me feel like this is a very special kind of shitty movie. <laughs> so, so continue. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's a good point. And I, <laughs> and I, I kind of like that. I've set up, hmm. I've set up my opinion to be that you, <laughs> you, that's the reaction you get hmm. to my reaction. Oh, yeah. So I'll, I'll kind of go back and say the, the bad movies that you're referring to are movies mm-hmm. like truth or dare. Mm hmm. That was horrible on Rotten Tomatoes. And I really liked Truth or Dare. Nice. Um, Ouija, the second Ouija is very well received. But mm. the first one, um, poorly reviewed. Mm. I, I didn't think it was that bad. And so the idea of Slender Man to me, um, you know, I think that it started out as a creepypasta mm-hmm. segment. Okay? Uh, there, have, You said comic strips. There's a video game that, oh, that's was... kind of... Uh, Sorry, I was just joking about the comic thing because it's. <laughs> I was making a joke of it being like Slender Man, like oh, it's a superhero movie. Oh, oh, Slender Man. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, no, there are comic strips. Okay. I mean, there's there's everything. <laughs> it is a he he is, um, a lower level pop cultural icon. Mm-hmm. He's an icon. Your your mom knows who Slender Man is, right? Mm-hmm. Like they they have either seen the creepy pasta heard of the game heard of junior high kids talking about slender man mm-hmm. or they've seen the news article about the girls who tra- tragically unfortunately disgustingly right. trying to kill their friend to sacrifice the friend of slender man so people know who slender man is everybody knows who slender man is mm-hmm. and it's just this cool idea of like like where did it start and and who on Creepypasta created it? Was it did it come up with this thing to where like the, there's this blend now of people who oh that Slender Man is just this meme. Mm-hmm. And when I say meme, I don't mean like the picture with words on the top and bottom. <laughs> meme, I mean like as a as a cultural social media icon that is shared. It's viral, viral right? Slender Man is viral, mm-hmm. and. So there are people who don't know if it's viral, believe that it's real, and then there are people who know the the viral aspect of it. And I just thought that a movie about that could be so interesting. Like, a a better film could explore those themes about viral horror stories, the dangers of the internet. You know, maybe there's something about our obsession with social media that brings Slender Man into existence, Maybe he always was real, and this creepypasta segment just, you know, brought him into the world. I don't know, kind of like a Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Like oh yeah, Freddy Krueger was this this being that that was ethereal and needed to just be thought of to exist, and so they start thinking about making a new Freddy movie. So this demon comes out as Freddy. Hmm. That would be cool. With Slender Man, it's such a creepy, cool yeah. uh, idea. It'd just be awesome. The characters in the movie Slender Man, they, they did not know who Slender Man was. Nobody, mm. there was no reference, there was no clever, n- nothing witty about it at all. There was no mystery, there was no like real. Are we, are we just crazy or did we actually do? There was no mystery. They, it's like the ring. Jeez. They watch a video, mm-hmm. they unleash Slender Man, and he is real. There is no question whether or not he's real, oh. and he just he just takes them. It's so, ugh, like Truth or Dare tried. Truth or Dare tried to say something. It tried to add a little bit of wit, and it, you know it's not the best movie, but at least you can see that they they said we need to go above a certain level. Mm-hmm. Slender Man is below that level to a point that I can't believe that this movie got made with this IP. I guess nobody owns any truly lucrative rights to this character to mm-hmm. say you can't release this shit show of a movie. Uh, and so yeah. just somebody just said, "Well, let's just make a movie and call it Slender Man." Hmm. 
you know, in, Ugh, it's so bad. And it's interesting. It's frustrating. Well, so, th- so th- this is interesting. So like when I, as, as we talked about, like we spent the summer, the rest of the summer, essentially compiling letterboxed and, and like, I basically what I would do is I would, um, I would do data entry for you and I would put like one year's worth of movies watched into your letterbox and then you would go in and rate all of them and do all that. Um, yes. so like there was a communal effort. I did the same for tiny. Um, so <laughs> while doing that for you, I kept noticing like, holy shit, man, I felt so, uh, inadequate with my horror movie watching, <laughs> Because it's interesting because, like, I – like, we bonded over a shared love of horror movies and, among other things, freshman year. But, like, I mm-hmm. have – I've always been – on one hand, I've always been pretty picky about horror movies and, and, and really movies and media in, itself. But that's a whole other conversation. And the second thing is that I just kind of drifted away from horror. And, like, what I've noticed, especially with doing my top 100, is, like, I have – I have gravitated more towards science fiction and being more into sci-fi and everything. And a lot right. of that is due to being doing anthology and, and finding these uh, sometimes very obscure B sci-fi movies to, to review and everything. So what, what I'm getting at is that uh, when I was putting in your information, and everything on letterboxd, I felt like a certain like tinge of inadequacy with horror movies. And I was just like, <laughs> I kept thinking, like, I really need to step up my horror movie game. And so, like, around the time, like, Slender Man was coming out, I was like, I should probably, like, I I literally have not seen any trailers, any marketing at all. I just know bits and pieces about mm-hmm. the copy pasta and everything, or creepy pasta. But, uh, creepypasta, but, like, yeah. and I was just like, you know, this is probably the best way to go into, like, a, a horror movie, having not seen any marketing or anything. And then I read your review and I was like, oh, I'm pumping the brakes on that. <laughs> like, it's not even good. worth. Yeah, yeah, you should. Oh, but yeah. I'll tell you, there's some good stuff coming out. Uh, hmm. I think that's worth seeing. I already have a ticket for the nun. Um, yeah. But yeah, what, what else is coming? I do, man, I do, I do watch a lot. You're, you're right. And uh, mm-hmm. um, I'm proud. I'm proud that you. Right. <laughs> that you feel inadequate about mm-hmm. my horror movie watching. Uh, it's only because, <laughs> you know, a lot of the podcasts I listen to mm-hmm. make me feel inadequate. Some of gotcha. the, some of the movies they've seen. I mean, my Sorry. list of my, my, my horror movie watch list is, it's too long. It's yeah. ugly. Well, and you and, also uh, went through the trouble of making a list for me, like a watch list of horror movies yeah. that I need to watch. So I'm definitely yeah, going to yeah, get cracking yeah, on that yeah. in the next few weeks. Yeah. So one of the things that kind of has been a product of, um, oh gosh, having kids really, mm-hmm. uh, is that I don't I don't get to rewatch a lot of the movies that I like, and so I watch you know uh, aside from Friday the Thirteenth, which I mm-hmm. just I have on in the background while I'm working on my computer. So yeah. like I watch Friday the Thirteenth. I, I mean, part three, part four, part six. Probably a dozen times a year. Wow. Just while I'm working on stuff. Hmm. Um, but in terms of like watching like my favorite horror movies, when Shocktober rolls around, of the 40 or so movies I watch, I will probably have only seen 10 of them. Wow. And huh. I just try really hard to seek everything out because mm-hmm. I want to get to a point where I'm like, yeah, now it's time to go through my favorites. Oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to your inevitable top oh, 100 here, horror yeah. movies. Yeah, coming up with a list of my top 100 mm-hmm. horror movies. I've got 61 nice. on there. And I guess I could make a top 100, but that mm-hmm. that last 39 would be... Mm-hmm. Plus, you might get a whole list uh, of like 85 other ones you'll have to go through. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah so letterbox potpourri <laughs> do you have any you want to throw up yeah <laughs> um i'm looking through the thing is of the most recent ones i've seen just about every single one of these yeah 
Well, I went through a tear. A lot of those are top 100 ones. So right, we, we, you would you would rather I? I mean, you you can say whatever. I have some pretty interesting stuff to say, but uh, one of them just because of the uh, I saw it in the theater, but not 2001, but one of the other ones. Which one? Uh, E.T. Oh, you saw E.T. in the theater? Yeah, 35 millimeter uh, print. It was pretty cool. Uh, I saw that in the theater last year. Nice. It came back, and it was it was great. Uh, do you want to talk about ET and how sure. you felt about it? Sure. Before. Yeah, because uh, and I won't dip too much into the whole top one hundred aspect of it, but like, I it was on the short list. It was one of the ones that I have like italicized because I wasn't sure if it was really going to make my top one hundred, specifically because I did not have that uh, nostalgia. Like, I didn't. It wasn't a babysitter movie for me. It wasn't like a movie that I grew right. up with, but. Rewatching it, I rewatched it. I think earlier this year, also before I came up with the top 100 project and everything. But uh, rewatching it this past weekend. So basically, let me set the scene. The uh, the historic art craft theater in Franklin, Indiana. I've uh, one of our past PopCon episodes. Um, I actually interviewed some people from the art craft. Uh, they it, that place is. Amazing. It's one of my favorite places. Like, um, <laughs> uh, so basically it's like an, kind of an antique theater. They play classic movies. Like they have a whole roster of movies that they play. Um, each weekend they play a different movie. Like in April, I am unbelievably excited because they are having a two day Alfred Hitchcock marathon. So Friday oh, nice. night, yeah, Friday night they're playing two movies. Saturday they're playing four movies. And I'm going to go to every one of them. Like it's, I'm going to do that and it's going to be incredible. Um, they make such an effort to screen actual film prints of the movies. Um, so they go through the effort of finding 35 millimeter prints, screening them and, and, and everything. And it's just, it's such a cool place. And like my, like my dream, like in my, like if I had unlimited, like, like, uh, if I was independently wealthy, like my dream would be to travel the country and going, go to places like the art craft and just seeing a movie, like interviewing the people, like that's what I want to do. Yeah. Like that is my yeah. dream. And my, uh, my, my sister-in-law and her husband, my brother-in-law, mm-hmm. uh, they live in Portland and they mm-hmm. have kind of one of those old art house nice. films and they'll, They'll send me a picture every now and then of, mm-hmm. of this movie they're they're watching this weekend. It's always makes me a little jealous that I yeah. live in Evansville. That's awesome. Well, that's that sucks for you a little bit, but um, but yeah. So I went and saw ET there this past weekend. Um, I actually went with a with a friend of mine from work that um, uh, we were going to go see Close Encounters because they played Close Encounters like three weeks ago. But right. my car needed maintenance and I didn't like, even though Franklin is like 30 minutes away from where I live, it's like, didn't really want to risk it. Um, so, so anyway, so I, we went to ET instead and like just the atmosphere is great. But like, I went into it thinking, um, like I was kind of nervous cause I'm like, do I really want, the, or do I really, would I, re- would it really be top 100 worthy for me? And like, like rewatching it, especially in the theater is like, yeah, cause it's like Steven Spielberg captures childhood so brilliantly. And like, it is just a beautiful movie. And like, I yeah. like was moved nearly to tears just at Are we talking about E.T. now? E.T. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. It's just in, it's just a wonderful movie and also the more familiar I get with the movies that inspired uh Stranger Things, the less impressed I am with the first season of Stranger Things. <laughs> because <laughs> You know, I've heard that a couple times yeah. from people. It's like other things kinda did it better. It's um Yeah, that first season is re- if you're familiar with E. T. Mm-hmm. It's really E.T. It's E.T., yeah. 
the, even, I mean, the plot obviously mm-hmm. is something else. But if you right. if, like, if you're painting the tone, mm-hmm. it's the same color palette. Yeah, like one of the big moments in Stranger Things season one was the van flipping over because Eleven, you know, stopped it, and I'm like. Literally, it's bicycles. Just exactly. It's literally, it's the, literally the, bicycles. the bicycles. First time I saw it, I thought that was cool, and mm-hmm. I turned to Amanda and I go, "That's the bicycles from ET." <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't but, crap on Stranger Things. Uh, yeah. It knows that it is mm-hmm. that exactly. But anyway, no. um, so yeah, but but man, I I really loved ET, and like it holds up so well. Um, like it's not dated. It doesn't, it doesn't feel dated. It just feels like you're existing in this, not even, I wouldn't even say like, oh, the era of the eighties or anything. It's just like, you're in, you're existing in this, in this world with this family and this little yeah. extraterrestrial. Um, and also, um, uh, 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 Drew Barrymore, right? Yeah. Uh, Gertie yeah. is freaking adorable. Like, ridiculously yeah, adorable is. um yes, yes, yes. yeah but yeah anyway i i really enjoyed it so it's on the list for top 100 we'll see if you know something knocks it out but um <laughs> but i do like that it's funny because i don't have that nest like i'm i'm not watching it and thinking like oh i remember when i was you know just a little rug rat running around and everything but like now it's right, like right, right. yeah but like watching it now as like a 32 year old i'm like I remember what it was like to be that age when I found yeah. an alien and befriended it. Um, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, it just, it just, it made me nostalgic for like the riding bicycle with your friends era of my life. So yeah. yeah. Also it was the first time I noticed, like I really noticed the walkie talkie thing. Um, and how, cause it, it, it played the, they played the 20, it was like the 20th anniversary print or whatever. Oh, that okay. had the walkie talkies. Man, that sucks. Yeah. And it was like, and it, it didn't detract too much from it, but it was just, it was so awkward seeing the way that like they were holding the walkie talkies with their, with their trigger, uh, yeah. finger and everything. But like, yeah, it was so awkward. But yeah. it was funny because I was like, I was with my friend. And I was like, Hey, you know, this, you know, that was actually guns and they, they, uh, they, you know, digitally altered it, altered they it. Altered, and then, yeah. yeah. And then there was a scene where this guy in a car is talking into a walkie talkie saying like, Oh yeah, they're going this way and everything. And I was like, you know, actually what you don't know is that he was actually talking into Why a gun. Talking to his gun? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. That's but no, funny. but yeah, but E.T. is is amazing. And uh, if you are in Indianapolis, go check out the Arcraft Theater because, man, it yeah. is – it's so – like they uh, – it's it's so quaint, I guess would be the word. I don't know if that has like a negative connotation to it or not, but it's just – it's so oh. – it's so just nice and like the, the feeling of it. It's like it's – you like we go to movies all the time. And going to the movies, like, okay, you have your ticket, you go sit down, watch the trailers and everything, and it's like, it's, it's fine. Um, it's like, it is, it is our hobby. But like going to a theater like the art craft, it's like an event. Like you go and yeah. you sit in your seat, they give you a little program, they, they do, <laughs> this is kind of the weird thing. They have you sing the national anthem <laughs> before, which I think is kind of really? weird. Really? Yeah. I don't like that at all. It's kind of weird, but they also play like a you know classic. What that is. Mm. That's got to be a reaction to take a knee. That's got to be like at our theater. Oh no, because I think they've they've been doing that for a long time. Like that's that's been a staple of it way before that. Oh yeah. Um, kind of weird, but they yeah. also like instead of playing trailers, they play. Well, they do play some trailers for movies that they're going to screen. Uh, in the coming weeks, but they play like before every movie, they play like a classic, like Looney Tunes, like cartoon, which I think is kind of interesting. And then, uh, and then they play the movie and it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So anyway, that's, that's, uh, ET at the Artcraft. Um, I don't, I, yeah. it's, I've, we probably don't have time to do another film each. Right. Just because we're, we're running out. So if yeah. you want to. Is there anything you want to throw out there as far as something you've watched, TV or movie related? Are you watching Castle Rock? No. Oh, okay. Man, I'm not, I haven't been watching anything. We, That's we just recently 
got our ca- we got our cable all set up on Saturday. <clears throat> nice. And then uh, we just we're working on the house every day, man. That's we, a lot of people were like, you know, take your time and mm. just get it done when you get it done. And we're like, that's not really how we work. We, right. We, like this was one of the first nights off I've taken. Oh, really? Wow. To do this, yeah, I'm working on the house. Yeah, and you had to it's, it's spend fun, it man. hanging out with me. <laughs> had to. Had to. Was forced to. Right. The only thing I'll mention is that I that I watched uh, to all the boys I've loved before. Uh, that was going to be the second thing I was going to ask you. Okay. Second. Yeah. So just briefly, mm-hmm. uh, just which everybody's talking about. Mm-hmm. Um. Like, so there's the half of me that loves the inclusion mm-hmm. aspect of it, right? The fact that it's a, that the main character is Asian, uh, that she's the lead of a romantic comedy. I like, I love that. I'm so happy for that. And I need more movies like that. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's, you know, where my politics lie. Right. Um, and then there's the other half of me who just like, I just don't love romantic comedies all that much. Uh, yeah. And so, I, you know, I fall kind of in the middle. I thought the movie was very, very, very cute. Mm-hmm. Um, and really, really well done. But um, I don't know. Oh, overrated. Probably overrated. Yeah. I, I, I sound so awful saying that. I don't, I don't want to say that out loud because I'm glad that it got made. And if you love the movie, I'm so happy that you have mm-hmm. that movie to love. So it's like, who gives a shit? Right. What a balding 32 year old man cares <laughs> about this movie. Right. Like it doesn't matter yeah. what I think of the movie, but if you're asking, it was fine. It was fine. You know, and man, this could be such a longer conversation too. Cause uh, kind of on the same token, crazy rich Asians. Have you seen that? Uh, we we've decided not to. Okay. I That's feel the same way. Yeah, we watched well, it today, and I'm mm-hmm. so glad mm-hmm. it's winning the box office. Oh yeah, I'm so glad people who want to see it are seeing it. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad that that if Asian people feel that you know uh, uh, entitlement over this movie, mm-hmm. I love. I'm so happy about that representation oh, as yeah. someone who who cares about that kind of thing. Yeah, but as someone who just I see the trailer and I hate that song, <laughs> and I don't care much for. <laughs> Rom-coms. Just don't, I don't just, yeah. just don't care to see it. And see, that's the like I I saw it specifically because like okay, first of all, I do I love rom coms, so so yeah. But a part of me saw it like made a point to see it specifically because, uh, because you know it's the first, you know, predominant really not even predominantly just all Asian cast, um, right? In a, that's in awesome. a movie, yeah in like 25 years. Um, and do you, mm-hmm. are you aware of like the, the history of like, uh, like what happened? Cause Netflix originally, uh, offered them like millions of dollars in a three movie deal to make a trilogy of movies for Netflix. And wow. Yeah. And, uh, I think the guy's name is John Chu. Um, mm-hmm. he turned them down because he wanted like he and the producers wanted this movie to screen in theaters like and have a release in theaters. So like, That's the, awesome. Oh yeah. And the amount of like, they could have been set for life with a Netflix deal for three movies, but they, they stuck to their, and like they, they, they wanted it to screen in theaters. So like I saw it because like, it's a, it's a big deal for, you know, Asian Americans in particular in, in like, Asian populations and everything, but like, just didn't really like it. <laughs> like, I just, yeah. yeah. I know. And I mean, and I feel like, I don't know. I feel kind of weird. Like, I also don't mean to be contrarian. Yeah. When I say it right, well, I don't, I don't want to like take the stance right. that I, and like, that's my kind wife of, loved it. I'll say my wife nice. loved, 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 loved to all the boys I've loved mm. before. And see, that's where it kind of gets kind of, uh, tricky i guess with what we do because like yeah we're we're two white men um who are commenting on film and like when you don't have that cultural um touch point with a movie like it doesn't it doesn't resonate with you because of cultural reasons what's what you're left with is just your regular 
criticisms or or commentary on the movie. Like one of the big things with me is like, okay, Crazy Rich Asians for as historically significant as it is, it had like this superfluous subplot that I didn't connect with. It had like I thought Aquafina was a little over the top and Ronnie Chang was not mm-hmm. used enough and like as charming as the two leads were, it just didn't really resonate for me in a significant way. And I'm like like putting that out there, it's like eh. I kind of feel a little bad, but I mean, it's successful. So, no. Hey, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it's kind of okay that we feel bad. I, I think yeah. it's good. I think, I think at least we know where, uh, we know, we know where we want to stand with it. We yeah. know what, who we want to be. Mm-hmm. We can um, separate it. But I think it's also yeah. good that we're able to just be objective and right. say if we didn't like the film, yeah, we because like the, film. the alternative is like okay, if we didn't like it, but oh, it's 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 part of a movement and it's it's important. So here's five stars just for that. Like that would be disingenuous. That would be it is yeah. that would dilute our um <laughs> it would dilute our voice as potential Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> critics. <laughs> if you this guys the, rate this us the episode we're gonna stand the rotten tomatoes <laughs> right <laughs> only uh, if you guys would rate us five stars on itunes so we get to 200 um yeah, right yeah but yeah so do we have anything well i mean we could probably talk for hours more but you know i know yeah we should probably start cutting it down um <laughs> yeah did you did you did i ask this did you answer it are you planning on watching castle rock at all uh, yes, it's okay. it's up there on my list. Cool, but uh, we're making our way through mm-hmm. Riverdale, and oh, Ozark comes back this Ooh, Friday. I need to watch so Ozark. My wife and I will. Mm-hmm. My wife and I will watch that. Yeah, um, a lot of the a lot of the shows depend on what Amanda wants to see. Gotcha. I'll uh, I'll do the letterboxed thing and just say, yeah, you should you should watch Castle Rock if you want. It's pretty good. It's cool. You know, just you know, watch it. You know, it's cool. <laughs> Um, if you get to, to it, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I think that'll just about do it for this episode of the obsessive viewer. Do you have any parting thoughts, Mike? No. Uh, but just now that I've got my own office and I'm in here and things are kind of settling down. I know I say this a lot. Uh, I'm, I, I'm hoping to be on the podcast a lot more frequently than I have been. It's very Absolutely. easy. Absolutely. Uh, for me to just come down here and, mm-hmm. and do an episode. So, uh, absolutely. And I think, I think if you, if you like my voice, I think you'll be hearing it a lot more frequently. And that makes me so excited. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, especially now that we've worked out the Good. connection issues. <laughs> I know, uh, that was a mess. Yeah. But yeah, so I've obviously, yeah. you know, one of the reasons why we started the podcast, really, and why I wanted to do the podcast, well, eh, the reason why, I, the reason that we've been doing the podcast for five years is I just love having these re- recorded conversations with with people that yeah, are important man. in my life. So I'm excited to, you know, yeah. uh, have you back on as frequently as we can get you. So, yeah, yeah man, sounds yeah. good. All right, and before we I'll go. Be back. Oh, Especially, yeah. uh, what do you got? Four more episodes in Shocktober? Oh, yes. We do need to do something for Shocktober. Oh, it's... <laughs> I legitimately don't know if you've frozen or... Oh, my God. He did fr- freeze. Okay. Okay, there we go. It froze. Yeah. yeah. The screen froze right when you made that face. And I was like, I legitimately don't know oh. if it froze. Yeah. Oh, I was just saying, um, what, uh, you said looking forward to me being back, and I said, mm-hmm. well, I mean, what do we got? Four more episodes until Shocktober? Yep. Definitely going to have to yep. do some Shocktober episodes. Oh, absolutely. And I need to really, really promote Shocktober and everything. Uh, it's, this is the most. Side note, you know what we ought to do is, if you don't mind, mm-hmm. is, uh, is bank some Shocktober episodes in September. Oh. I like that. So we oh can, yeah. So I can, <laughs> I can bow out and and right. watch movies. <laughs> you know what? During the actual ones. If you want, uh, if you have time, go on to that list that you made and pick like the five essential ones, and I'll watch them, and that'll be one of the episodes. Is like even if it's oh, just me man. and you, we can do that. 
So all right, yeah. let me co- then I'll then I'll come up with a theme. Okay, sweet. Okay, sweet. All right. Uh, but yeah, but before we go, once again, where can people find you on Twitter and on uh, Letterboxd? You find me at I am Mike White on Twitter. Also, I am Mike White on Letterboxd. Yeah. And as good as it gets, Vox A G A I G V O X on Instagram. If that's yes, your thing. and also by uh, as good as it gets uh, album uh, pastiche. Really, yes. anywhere that yes. music is available, pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. all right. Mm-hmm. A, Thank you. An album of straight bangers. Um, <laughs> 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 it's a very good album, but yeah. All right. Well, that will Thanks. do it. No problem. That'll do it for this week's episode of the podcast. Next time on the podcast, we're actually going to have a special requested review of uh, Vanilla Sky with really just me and Fekas because it was requested by uh, Patreon supporter uh, Robert uh, Garter, and he uh, requested that we review Vanilla Sky, and I owe him so many reviews on Anthology, so we will definitely get Vanilla Sky like next week for him. So, yeah, having said that, uh, that'll do it for this week. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Sounds good. Thanks for listening, guys. Yay! Thank you for listening to The Obsessive Viewer, presented by ObsessiveViewer.com. You can find more of our episodes at ovpodcast.com, and you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or anywhere else podcasts are found. If you'd like to support the show, the best and easiest way is to leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. More ratings and reviews means it'll be easier for people to find the show in the highly competitive film and TV podcast genre. It also provides us with valuable feedback on the show. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can make a one-time PayPal donation at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate or become a patron at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer for recurring donations with different reward tiers. Every donation goes toward paying the fees to keep the podcast running and is greatly appreciated. For official Obsessive Viewer merch, including shirts, mugs, notebooks, phone cases, and more, visit our Tee Public store. You can also buy other great Tee Public designs in our store, and we'll get a small commission on the sale. You can find a link to the store in the show notes of this episode and at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. The Obsessive Viewer's theme song is An Eclipse of Events and is provided by Loudlike from their EP, Mistakes We Must Make. You can find that and more great music from them on iTunes and like their Facebook page at facebook.com slash loudlikemusic. Any and all feedback on the podcast is encouraged. We love to hear from you guys. You can contact us by emailing podcast at obsessiveviewer.com or by tweeting us at obsessiveviewer, at obsessivetiny, and at I am Mike White. You can also like us on Facebook and join the Facebook group at facebook.com slash theobsessiveviewer where you can take part in discussions and polls between episodes. For more podcast content, check out Anthology, Matt's solo podcast, where he's reviewing The Twilight Zone as a first-time viewer and exploring other classic and contemporary science fiction anthology TV shows. You can find Anthology at anthologypod.com and anywhere podcasts are found. For book lovers, you can check out our sister site at obsessivebooknerd.com for book reviews, author spotlights, and a general celebration of reading. Finally, if you're philosophically curious, check out Tiny's side project podcast, The Secular Perspective, which explores the concepts of faith, religion, and existence from the perspective of secular hosts Chad and Amanda. You can find that at thesecularperspective.com and subscribe to the podcast on the app of your choice. Once again, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.